Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hello, Santa. Hello, Larry. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I mean, producer Bolte. We have to remember about branding, everybody. If you keep calling him Mike, nobody's going to remember producer Bolte. <laughs> <laughs> it causes confusion. You're right about that, Santa. Well, everybody has to be careful on your way in. The roads are total ish. Yeah, they are. We, we were, I was driving down MLK, sliding, and some people were going too slow. Some people were going too fast. Yes, that's very frustrating when some people are overconfident and some people are underconfident. Both can cause crashes. That's right. Santa got me new tires for Christmas, so... Yes, I did. You don't want to know what I made Mikey do for those tires. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you mean producer Bolt? Yes, I... Oh, I even forgot. (laughs) Anyway, it's exhausting doing two voices. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, one. <laughs> um, so, no, no, uh, just uh, everybody, please be cautious and know that as you're waking up, you're going to have to add to your timeline as far as I am. It's going to build an extra time to drive the, to get to work, extra time to warm your car. And for all you people that have garages like I do, consider yourself very lucky. Yeah. Uh, because Chris and I, we came back from Portland. We were uh, over the weekend, we were in Portland. So we came back yesterday, and uh, you know he has employee parking, mm-hmm. so that's outdoor. And oh, so okay. when we land, we have to take the shuttle to the employee parking lot. And our car on one side was completely just ice, oh. like like ice, ice. Like it couldn't scrape off. Yeah, it you can't like, even open the door. Right, it was like glass. Yeah. It was like crazy. And so yeah, we started the car, and we had to sit there for like twenty minutes and let the whole thing warm up because. There was just no scraping it. And then you're like, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the seat warmers help, and and the, uh, you know, eventually, like you can sometimes, if you're daring, this is a real gamble, depending on what the temperature is, but you can hit the fluid to break it up a little bit, yeah, because that stuff doesn't freeze. It's yeah. meant to not freeze, but then sometimes if it's too cold, you just put another layer of uh-huh. glass like, on top it. of ice. <laughs> yeah, so we had to take our time, but. Um, yeah, I was going to wait. Uh, when Kathy gets here, she's she'll be here shortly, wanting her to drive careful. Uh, she's a fainting mother. Um, we had a great time in Portland. Um, I've been there once before, uh-huh. and um, it was really cool. We kind of one of our motivating reasons was to go to this place that's a vegan barbecue place. Which doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> right, that <laughs> sounds like an oxymoron. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like uh, one of those viral videos that you see on um, Facebook. Yeah. That's like, oh, hey, this people make this, and these people cook this. Well, there's vegan ones floating around, and this guy used to be, you know, a barbecue restaurant guy, and then he converted to vegan, and he's like, well, I'm gonna, I gotta try to still make barbecue because he loves it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna talk about that later. I don't want to shoot my Portland load without <laughs> Kathy here. Yeah, not till Kathy's here to receive it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it was just one of our main reasons we went there. But we went to. Uh, have you ever been there? Uh, no, I, I've, I might have family in Eugene. Okay. I've visited when I was little, but no, I don't I don't know much about Oregon. Right, right. Uh, it's very, like, it was cloudy and rainy uh-huh. um, and a little tiny snowy, uh, but I kind of like, like that. I know that uh, some people that live there definitely move away from there after a while because it's like Seattle. It's kind mostly gray and cloudy. Depressing. Yeah, but I thought, like, man, I could really get used to this. I know I'd miss the sun after a while. Yeah. But, I mean, I could see that weather putting, like, 20 pounds on a person. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was the dispensary situation? Well, you know what? I actually, um, they were everywhere. Yeah. They're kind of, like, here. Okay. And so they're everywhere. But uh, I brought. Yeah. So, like, I, you know, I just. You didn't really threw, have to do it. Right. Because, you know, I mean, I could have. I was going to. But then I was like, that's just an extra stop I have to make. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we, well, depending on where we land, blah, 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 blah. And then you have to go in and probably fill out paperwork and yep. this, that, the other. So whatever, I just brought. And uh, it was funny because that you mentioned that because when we were leaving yesterday, I still had some. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> I'm only really kind of willing to risk it to get it out there because it's still like a ticket, I think, if they find it. It's yeah. Like not the end of the world. Misdemeanor. Put it in with my toiletries, whatever. So when we're leaving, I'm like, ah, I'm probably not going to take it with me. So I think, you know, I could leave it for the housekeepers, but then I was like, yeah, they probably don't want it. I don't know. Yeah. I was like, I knew to give it to one of the valet guys. So they're like, hey, it's up. So this guy pulls our car around <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, um, get ready to go to the airport. 
getting rid of our, all our stuff. I was like, uh, and I pulled it out, and he's like, oh, I don't. Uh, and I was like, it's herb. And he's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, there, it was like the best tip big guy he, ever got. I wonder what he thought it was. Um, no, no, yeah, I don't know. He's, he's like, Ugh. yeah, it's a, a little jar or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but he was pretty excited. Um, so, yeah, that can be used as a tip there as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, where you have uh, legal marijuana and pizza, uh, you have the rare uh, thing of being able to tip your pizza guy with weed and tip your weed guy with pizza. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stupid news is coming up next. Kathy will be here momentarily. Everybody drive safe and leave a little bit early. Blazing Hit Radio. Good morning, you guys. Now with more us. You rock. Better music, less commercials, more Larry and Kathy. I just love you both. Aw, oh, thanks. Uh, Kathy, stupid news, we promised you that is coming up. Uh, but we figured we'd give a quick update on the closures and delays. And uh, I read them in my regular voice before. <clears throat> So I figured I'd change it up, yeah. and uh, I'm going to read these school closures in a couple different voices, probably starting with Morgan Freeman. Academy of Urban Learning delayed 90 minutes. Adams County District 14 schools delayed two hours. American Academy delayed one hour. Anch uh, Anchor Center for the Blind Children delayed one hour. Air up. <laughs> this one's <laughs> hard. Jesuit <laughs> High School closed. BML Operations Center delayed two hours. Bishop Matchbuff High School delayed two hours. <laughs> Blessed Sacrament Catholic School delayed one hour. Shawshank Redemption was a movie that I was in, <laughs> and that's delayed two hours. Oh. Bright Beginnings Learning Center delayed two hours. CU Boulder, one hour, 45 minutes. CU South Denver, open at nine. Cesar Chavez, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it refreshed, sorry. <laughs> Cesar Chavez Academy. Wasn't that a drug lord, Cesar Chavez? What am I thinking? <laughs> Cesar uh, Chavez Academy, De Denver, one hour delayed. Colorado Railroad Museum closed. Denver Christian Schools delayed one hour. I'm going to switch voices now. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Freeman. Elbert, <laughs> Elbert School District 200 delayed two hours. Fitzsimmons Middle School in Bailey delayed 90 minutes. Front Range CC, all campuses delayed one hour. Holy Family High School delayed two hours. <laughs> Johnson in Wales, this is school for fat kids. <laughs> it's delayed two hours. You have to be a whale to go there. I'm kidding. They make very <laughs> bad cakes, but they'll eventually be good cakes. I'd imagine your fist cake me. <laughs> Kit Carson School District R1 delayed two hours. Lake George Charter School delayed two hours. Uh, Lyman School District delayed two hours. Little Giants delayed two hours. What is that, the little movie? Yeah. Little Giants? <laughs> the football movie. It's a Little Giants learning center. It's like a oxymoron. Little Giants? That's like vegan barbecue. Is that even <laughs> possible? It's like a gay straight guy. Little Giants Learning Center delayed two hours. Lotus School of Excellence. Excellence. Closed. Mapleton Adams District 1 delayed two hours. And Mile High Montessori delayed one hour. I'm going to change the voice again. Um, <clears throat> let's see what voice. Uh, <clears throat> gosh, I can't even think. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is just a tribute to uh, somebody that I miss. Um, On-site consulting delayed one hour. This is Michael Jackson for all you young kids who don't know who this is. You're lucky I'm not around. Our Lady of Lourdes. <laughs> Lourdes is closed. Parker Personal Care Health is closed. <laughs> I could sound like Janet. That sounds like Janet, too. Uh, no, I'm going to do the rest. Tiny. Uh, P, uh, party district RE12 clone. Come on, Tiny, nobody understand you. Shut up, Tip. Yeah, my <laughs> husband. Pinnacle Charter High School delayed two hours. Pinnacle Charter School K8 delayed two hours. Platte Canyon High School delayed 90 minutes. Platte Canyon Schools delayed 90 minutes. Reese's Jesuit High School delayed two hours. Regis University delayed one hour. Ricardo Flores, but God Academy closed. What? Yeah, what did you <laughs> just say? I said Ricardo Flores, Man God Academy closed. Rick, uh, Rick Center for the Gifted Children delayed one hour. 
uh, Ridgeview Classic Schools closed. Uh, Rocky Mountain Lutheran High School closed. Sacred Heart of Jesus delayed two hours. And damn, it's refreshing. Okay, uh, <laughs> Shepherd of the Hills Christian delayed two hours. And we're going to let Morgan Freeman have the last one. <laughs> Westminster Public Schools delayed two hours. We thank you for listening to Blazing Hill Radio. Those are the school closing and delays that we have. Ta- time to tell them what's next. Coming up next, Candy J got that stupid dish y'all love. I don't care what they say about me. And now. I go dumb, I go stupid, I get crazy. Come on and clap. It's Kathy J's Stupid News. Real quick, how was your commute? Uh, The side streets suck, man, don't they? Right. I didn't take the highway. I took a MLK all the way in. Oh, so, so your side street, how was it? It was cool. It was a direct line. I actually timed the lights right for once. But I didn't. I was ep- iffy to get on the freeway because sometimes you can't see the lanes. Is that what it's like? No, actually, I-25 is beautiful. Oh, nice. Yeah, but it was 225 in Hampton that sucked. Oh, uh, okay. Especially in Aurora. We got a lot of snow. Did you guys? Yeah, we definitely got our share. We got more than what's over here in Denver. Yeah, like, yeah. I got like two inches downtown, maybe. Right. One oh, I got half. more than that. I got more inches in uh, Aurora. Yeah. <laughs> We've heard about your two inches, Bolte. <laughs> yeah, we did. Happy <laughs> birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. Yeah, it's time for stupid news. Okay. So, a cop who doesn't know how to swim jumps into a freezing river to save a guy from drowning. Well, then don't jump in. If you don't know how to swim, now the guy, somebody has to save two people. Right. You can just walk along the edge. Right. And try to find some sort of stick. Get a rope. <laughs> Plus, right. cops are heavy. They have those belts and those yes. boots. And, and the jacket. And they're usually kind of, some of them are like A little big. overweight. Well, or just brawny. <laughs> <laughs> Cops um, age like baseball players. For sure. Right. They almost like have they, the same outfit. Right. I mean, <laughs> kind of. Like they can still do job. No, right? no, for yeah. sure. And I, I don't know. I mean, I think cops and baseball players are hot. Yeah. There's a police officer in Northern England. His name is Muhammad. He hasn't been a cop very long and he's in training. Looks like he's in his mid-20s. Okay. So on Saturday, he's hanging out, sees a guy fall in the, re- in the river. Well, it's winter, so freezing right. river. He was struggling to keep his head above water. So without thinking, Muhammad did what any cop and first responder does. They jump into danger. Gotta keep one jump ahead of on the law, man. One jump and I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so he's not the strongest swimmer. Actually, he can't really swim at all. Oh. He, uh, <laughs> But he must have some sort of skills because he jumped in with all of his gear on. Weight made it a lot harder. The freezing cold made it a lot harder. And somehow he managed to stay afloat and help the guy to shore. Wow. They're okay. Wow. Shrinkage. Yeah, Yeah, well, there was that for sure. Uh, Not clear how deep the water was, but the river was moving really fast. There's body cam footage of it, which is really cool. Well, if the water's cold enough, it can kill you in like minutes. Yes. Like the people in Titanic died in 10 minutes. Yeah. Something like that. Everyone at the cop station is now calling him the Hoth. Because wow. he jumped in like David Hasselhoff ah. in Baywatch. <laughs> it's probably easier than his no, Mohammed. <laughs> right. Trump's uh, uh, having been investigated because of his name. Yeah. You're right, totally. Jerk. A lady leaves a note telling an ambulance driver, could you please move your car? <laughs> <laughs> and gets really? arrested. Really? Good. I'm glad she right. got arrested. For sure. So, a 26-year-old lady, really, uh, to be young and stupid, 26-year-old chick in England went outside Sunday, and there was an ambulance parked in front of her house. You know who I'm picturing? Huh. The girl that's the model in London with a gap tooth. That's who I'm picturing. <laughs> You're watching that show? <laughs> no. Of the models? Oh, uh, what do you mean? A tall model? No, there's another show where oh. you can watch these, like, models trying to become supermodels. Oh, I just know that there's some girl they use in London ads. The London look. And she's got that gap between oh, yeah. her teeth. And I'm like, why are you a model? And it's like, the more weird you are. Because you gotta have pretty ugly. Right. Ugly pretty. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. But anyways, this chick in England. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she comes out. There's it's an the ambulance. London look. And the ambulance was actually responding to an emergency. Okay, right. so it wasn't just parked there. She didn't care, though. She got really angry and left a note saying, you have no right to be parked here. You've got no right to be parked here. I could give a blank if the whole street collapsed. Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to oh, cop it. I could care if the whole street collapsed. I could give a blank. I could give a blank. If the whole street collapsed. If the whole street collapsed. Now move your van. Now move your van. <laughs> 
The ambulance service tweeted a picture of the note. When the cops saw it, they went and arrested the lady for public order offense. Wow, did she put her address on there? I don't know. I know, right? Maybe <laughs> she, had, just, she maybe signed she it. Maybe she signed it. <laughs> Apartment it B. Right. Uh, the note was the reason she got uh, arrested. The woman also verbally abused the paramedics when they were coming out to get into their car. So maybe they saw her play or whatever. You I know, don't know. She drove but away. Still, you idiot. Yeah, you don't yell at those people. They're saving lives. They yeah. have enough to worry about. Exactly. And finally, a guy broke into somebody's place to watch a bunch of porn, but he didn't use their porn. He brought his own. Oh, okay, that's weird. He just needed a warm place. <laughs> he just needed a warm CD slot. Okay. 28-year-old dude, Alan, broke into a business of Van Nuys. He wanted to use their computer. He had to watch some porn, and he brought his own CD filled with porn. Right, because they probably have, like, blocks on their internet or something. Firewall. You know? Right, exactly. Right. The owners of the business live upstairs. Ooh. Oh, too bad, Alan. Did you hear that? He probably <laughs> thought he had till 6 a.m. the next day. Right. He's like, I'm going to get fully naked. And right. Enjoy this. That's the best way. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's but eating uh, people's food out of the fridge. Yeah. The wife, as it would be, she heard something. She's all, nothing, dear. Stay upstairs. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The wife was the one that found him. She went downstairs and noticed the computer was on. And so she wanted to investigate a little more, turned on the lights, and saw him sitting there in the dark. She's completely like, naked. You were right, Bolty. <laughs> I said that. that. Was very, I, I agreed that I'm it sorry. was awesome. Okay, that's what it was. <laughs> she screamed, got the attention of her husband and son. Uh, she, so, no, no, she turned the light back off, and it happened. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, come back tomorrow night. <laughs> the husband and son tackled the guy and held him down until cops got there. That's kind of hot. He'd also managed <laughs> to uh, rob the place before starting the porn. Oh, not anymore. He took cash, yeah. so he's facing burglary charges as well. The mom's like, I think I should question him alone. Yeah. I think you two should leave. <laughs> and I should get it out of here. I should be alone. <laughs> right. Where are the jewels? Call now. 303-728-3420. Blazing Hit Radio. I'm sorry, I guess I dialed the wrong number. Call or text now. Hello? I know your secret. I hope everybody had a good Presidents Day. Um, we did like, you know, our huge traditional thing where we all got together and exchanged gifts and <laughs> yeah. eat presents, dressed up, cake. Dressed up like presidents. <laughs> right, we <laughs> right. Uh, have mattress sales and stuff like we that. We all have a presentation. We all get a different president. Uh-huh. Four scores right. ago. Right. I yeah, had to be right. Trump. You did great. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, both of you, Trump oh. and Lincoln, both yeah. of you were fantastic. Yeah. I'm the I, best. I'm the greatest. I mean, I <laughs> thought I... spells like me. I was rocking the Teddy Roosevelt mustache. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, and then, you know, I thought that uh, Aldo as um, L.B. Johnson was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, no, no, uh, over the weekend, Chris and I uh, went to Portland. And uh, one of our other reasons is because Chris has, like, um, traveling ADD. Yeah. Like, he has to go somewhere. He He's kind a- of. It's part of why he's a flight attendant, right? He's a Sagittarius. They yeah. gotta, they gotta go. And it's like for me, flying, and doing that whole process, and you know, even though we have TSA precheck, it which makes it way a lot easier. easier. Yes, but it's still having to sit next to, you know, another big guy, and you know, it's just like because like you know, there was like <laughs> he and I like got we we're like oh we got our seats together, and we we're like oh it's next to like some giant man. Okay. So I was like, no, I'm just definitely not getting an armrest between him and Chris. I was like. Oh, just full my arms the whole flight. Oh, so you were in I the middle. I was in the middle, yeah. Okay. But uh, no, no, We uh, one of the reasons that we went was because um, there's just like a vegan barbecue place that had that one of those viral videos that you see on Facebook. And I was like, oh, I definitely want to try that. And he was down to go somewhere. Uh-huh. Um, and Have you ever been to Portland before? One time. We went there and I went to the, that was where the fo- first Voodoo Donuts was. Okay. So I had Voodoo Donuts before anybody. Wait, you went to Portland just for Voodoo Donuts? Well, it was a, we were on our way to his friend Annie's wedding in Hawaii. Oh, gotcha. So I think we were there for like a day and then so we went to Voodoo and rode public transit. I hate the fact that you say that. Now I want to want Voodoo Donuts. I know. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time I get suckered. I'm off this donut weighs a pound. How far, um, how long is that flight? Uh, it was two and a half hours or like two, like maybe two something. Oh, so it's not bad. It's like going to California. Exactly. And it's a really cool little town. I mean, like it's comparable to Denver in a lot of ways, but it's very gray and cloudy, which I kind of liked. Yeah. And so. You wouldn't like it every day though. I know. I hear people get really depressed or whatever. Um, but the sun broke through a little bit here and there and, uh, we got to go to that vegan place and, 
Um, it was super crowded, and you could tell it's like that whole town's like, we don't eat things with faces. Uh -huh, there's a right. lot of those. They're very, things. yeah. Have you seen that show, Portlandia? They're aware. Have you seen it? They're woke. They're woke, yeah. Um, have you seen? No. Okay, there's a show that uh, the guy, Fred, Fred Armisen from SNL, he has a show on Netflix called Portlandia, and it's about just people there and how they're, you know, overly like, conscious of everything they think they're better than us kind of so yeah. like, so fred, right. fred armison and his wife or whatever their girl his girl they go to this restaurant and they're like can you tell us uh about the chicken and she's like uh it's free range it's this that the other she's like he's like can you give us more information about the chicken <laughs> so she comes back with a pamphlet like a little folder are you kidding she's like this is charles and uh this was where he grew up and they have pictures are of the you, farm right. and they're like huh. he loved to sit in the sun right exactly so they're like <laughs> way overdoing it and then they get so ridiculous they're like where is this farm and they're like she's like it's not that far it's a couple miles that way and they're like do you mind if we go see the farm Oh my where God. Where the chicken was from. And she's like, <laughs> sure, I'll hold your table. So then they go to the chicken farm and they like, all of a sudden there's some like cult leader running it and they fall for his cult thing and they stay there for like three years. And then it shows them like, you know, like the man's like falling in love with the leader and so is she. And so all of a sudden, three years later, they come back to their table at that restaurant yeah. and that waitress is still there. And they're like, she's like, so how was it? And he's like, we're more interested in the salmon. Can you tell us where the salmon is? <laughs> oh from? my God. <laughs> and it starts all over, but yeah. it's just ridiculous and it just makes fun of those people. Um, but it was like, uh, it was cool. I mean, it was like uh, the hotel we stayed at was one of those kind of like cool hotels. But in for, what way? You know, like it's not a regular chain, it's more of like, we're like, what do they call those boutique hotels? Okay. Like artsy. Kind of. I mean, just a little more like. Mm -hmm. Like but, looking bed and breakfast, or we're talking like a homestead where there's like a, a kitchen JW, in it. like it's kind of it's a hotel, but okay. it's, it's a little more modern. All right, and it's so it's not like you know regular Hamden Inn or whatever. Okay, so Chris has points there, or whatever. And so in the lobby, they've decided to be like those businesses now where they pump in those fragrances. Hate mm. that. Me too. Unless if it's the right fragrance, because I don't mind the. The fragrance that they have at Dave and Buster's or the Wynn, I think they're very similar. Yeah, it's the Aria that sucks. <clears throat> right, whatever. They all Fabrice too much. So they did this in the lobby of this hotel, and it smelled just like an old uncle's cologne. Ew. So every time we came in, I was like, oh, I can't. I had to like hold my breath to get uh -huh, through right. the lobby. And so I was like, um, I don't think anybody's into that smell. And then wherever you were going, you smelled like, like that old that uncle. As we left. Right. I was like, if you have bad memories of an old uncle, yeah. it's not the place to stay. <laughs> um, but no, no, it was, uh, the food was awesome and we had a really good time and it was cool just to get out of town. Chris and I haven't like been able to connect like that. And so we drove a lot. And we drove through, um, oh my God, this is really cool. We went to, they have uh, Air and Space Museum kind of thing. Okay. So they have like, a, you know, kind of like we have the one Wings in Lowry the Rockies. kind of, but this is way better because in one of the buildings is the Spruce Goose, which is that giant plane that um, Howard Hughes built. It's oh. the world's largest oh, plane. Oh, wow. Right. And I remember seeing that as a kid in a hangar. It used to be next to the Queen Mary right. in San Diego. <laughs> And then they moved it and they put it in this building. And so when we were pulling up, I was like, I don't know if that building could hold that plane. And inside there it was. Yeah. And so it's. Is the, that the one that made him bankrupt or that's just the one no, that he. That is the one that like he had to deal with the army to make this enormous plane. And then you'd be able to like drop off 700 guys after it landed on the water. Yeah. And you could drop off a couple tanks and stuff. Right. So he was really ahead of his time with this concept. But the whole thing was made of wood. And at some point the government. So heavy. The government's like, hey, we've spent so much on this. It, show us it can fly. Right. So he went out on the water and it got up and he flew a mile and then it landed and that's all it's ever flown. Wow. Uh, and so, yeah, now it's just in a museum. And he didn't even finish it. By, by the time he finished it, the war was over. Oh, okay. So he was all, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what's crazy about that water park, and I'd recommend anybody go there with your family because not, um, so they have the museum with, right. with the arrow and then they have a space museum. Then they have a huge IMAX thing. And then... They have a huge, you know, those planes, the bigger ones that have the upstairs. Yes. You know, when you fly like to they Hawaii. Have two levels. Right. right. They have one of those sitting on top of the building and they've turned it into a water park. So you climb up in the plane 
and you ride water slides all the way down into this wow. big giant water park. Do you jump out of the side of it like as if you were jumping onto a floaty? Well, no, no, you get in the tube, which is attached to the plane. Okay. So you eventually get up in the plane, and then you go down and then get in the tube. Well, I know. Do you come? I'm trying to ask how you exit oh. the plane in the tube. Is uh, it through the nose of the plane? No, is through it the through, tail. Through the tail? Through the tail. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. So you just see these giant planes sitting everywhere as you go out there. They have military planes, okay. everything. So if you're looking for something to do that's not too far away, it's Portland, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Larry for Portland. So up, up in the plane, how does it look like in the plane before you get on the water slide? Oh, uh, we didn't go to the water park. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's not swim season for us. <laughs> sorry, what was So we did not include that okay. in the price. We were at the Spruce Goose where you keep your clothes on. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the ride to there and, like, you know, driving the side roads, it really felt like we were in a small, like, European town. Or, oh, that's it, cool. It was really cool. And they have, like, like you were going to see real wooden windmills. Right, exactly. And there's like cows everywhere, and you're like, oh, those cows look like they're treated nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what you were really thinking. Well, no, I mean, like because like I've seen some bad nightmare videos to get oh, me off yeah. Gary, so I'm like, it looks very industrialized. So these cows are actually just like free roam, right? Just yeah. hanging out, right? So what was your pulled pork fake sandwich made of? That's what I was. I saw the yeah, picture right. of it, and it looked like uh, a pulled pork. Right, right. So they take um, it's called tempi. Like when you look in the vegan section. Um, there's, it's like, it's just another form of a soy okay. So, or, okay. or tofu. Okay. Uh -huh. And so it's more condensed and they just like chop that up and they rub it in spices and put it in barbecue and then they just cook it. And, yeah. it, and it's, it's like enough, it's meaty enough and they put the slaw on it and you put it on a bun. It was really good. You can hide it in that sauce and seasoning. Yes, yeah, but I right. mean, hide it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's meant to absorb the flavor and mimic the, the, yeah. the, the reaction. Like tofu does. Tofu absorbs the flavor. Right, right, for it. sure. Yeah. But sometimes tofu is very obvious. You're like, that's a very scary. Right, this is more blendable with meat. Yeah, okay. Cool. And so then they have this thing called no mac, uh, mac no cheese. Uh -huh. So it was their version of mac and cheese. So it's like a faux cheese in there. Okay. And it was brilliant. It was like there was, like I said, it was a lot of people waiting to eat in there. Were they all thin? Oh uh, yeah, everybody <laughs> in that town looked pretty thin, and everybody was kind of like had that beard, right. that one haircut, they yeah, rode their and then the tight jeans. Yeah. Right, I was like, wow, everybody looks so different out here. Did you partake in the legal wheat? Uh, I brought. Oh. So yeah, yeah, I didn't want to have to. See, I thought you would have. That would you would have wanted to see what a dispensary looked like up there. Yeah, but I mean, uh, nobody's better than Green Solution. Yeah. I get a discount there. Okay, uh, it was. I I could have done it for just. Yeah, you know, but I mean, I already had. And then, like I was telling him when I was leaving, I gave it to the valet guy, and he couldn't be happier. I bet, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, you didn't have a valet. You had a car. No, no, when you valet your car. Oh. You know, you park At the hotel? Yeah, you pull it up, and then they park okay, it. Okay, yeah, 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 sorry, okay. And so when they pulled it up when we were leaving, I was almost going to throw it away, because I feel sketch about that sometimes. Yeah. Because you're like, some people you could approach, and they're like, what? Disgusted. I don't want your drugs. Right, totally. Uh, um, but this guy was like, he was like, I was fumbling for my words, you. and I was like, right, do you, and, and it's funny too, because we had seen this guy the day before, and Chris was getting out of the car, and he's like, the guy was getting in, and he was like, Chris goes, hey, we left some Britney Spears on for you, and he's all, huh, and, <laughs> and I go, how old are you, and he goes, 19, I was like, so Britney Spears is technically your mom. Right, right. And he goes, yeah, I've seen her before. He's like, I'm pretty sure I would do her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blazing Hit Radio. Now with more, more us. us. They're just really funny. Better music. Less commercials. More Larry and Kathy. Um, by the way, um, we want to talk a little bit about the ba Black Panther. Black Panther. But you were, um, coming up next, we're going to talk about the girls. Yes, yeah, something... Something that Larry would not approve of <laughs> happened between with the girls and I. Oh my God, you got linoleum in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it happened yesterday. The girls came to work with me to the TV station. Oh. And something really, something bad happened. Oh no. Yeah. Somebody pooped in. No, oh. it wasn't that. Oh, Thank somebody, God. Somebody left a dirty diaper in Kirk Yankee's desk. <laughs> no, uh. no, but I could just see how you would have reacted as uh. opposed to how I reacted. <laughs> All right, that's coming up. Okay. I'm dying to know. I yes. can't wait. Um, so Black Panther. Black Panther made two hundred thirty-five million dollars over the four-day weekend. That's insane. But still not number one for the best opening. A weekend of all time. Was that Wonder Woman or no. Avengers? No, it was Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Oh wow! Because remember, everybody had been joking right, for, for twenty sure. years for a good Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, that, and that was a good one. Two hundred forty-eight million. So Black Panther made two thirty-five. Force Awakens, which holds number one, is two forty-eight. 
Um, Number I, two is The Last Jedi, which just opened before Christmas. Right, right, right. Wait, uh, okay, oh, wait. yeah, that was a good one, too. Yes. Uh, Jurassic World holds the number three spot okay. with 208 million, which Jurassic World was... I liked it. That was with Chris was Pratt, good. right? Yeah, yeah, where he's yeah, with yeah. the raptors. Right, he's all, I, I was your dad. Don't eat me. Mm -hmm. Stay. <laughs> I'll see you right there. Stay. <laughs> you know Blue comes back in the second one. Right, yeah. for sure. Um, Avengers, the, the first one, is number four, and Black Panther comes in at number five. Um, man, that movie was so good, and we obviously aren't going to give anything away. But no. Did more... you get to see it, Baltina? No, no, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, more people... Oh, you don't really care about superhero yeah, stuff. Yeah, but I need to care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike, Mike finds himself a little racist every now and again. And <laughs> oh, okay. yes. He needs to care yes. about this movie. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no. Uh, but no, no, it was uh, so good that um, it's obviously, you know, you could talk a little bit more about it because more people have seen it. But um, what I like is... All the careful. people. Yeah, careful. Yeah, careful. <laughs> Don't uh, say too much. <laughs> no, no. I like the effects of the movie. Like, there's little girls in some theaters that are dressing like those guards. Yes, totally. I saw them doing their it's thing. It's awesome. Yeah. And uh, there was some meme video, and it was like um, a bunch of black people dancing. And it's like, after you leave Black Panther. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really good. For real. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. Yeah. This is their first superhero, even though I love the fact that it's such a mass appeal superhero, which is what superheroes should be. Right, but you know a lot of black, black women are, are listening going, Kathy, he's ours. Can we have just one? I don't know, girls. Yeah, I, got I to, met him. I got to sit across the, across the, you know, like our knees were almost touching girls when I got to interview him. I'm just saying. Well, you also And he did stare at my boobs while I was interviewing him. I went back and listened to the interview. Uh -huh. As soon as I come in and say Kathy J, the tape's already rolling on him, and Chadwick goes, Kathy J, that's a cool name. That's a cool name. And I'm nice. sitting down, getting situated in the chair, and mm -hmm. he's staring at my boobs. Right. And then he's staring at the, the silver necklace that I wear. Sometimes it looks like a bullet. You call it a black guy whistle. Right. It's kind of like <laughs> only black guys can hear it. Right. It's like, it's like a right. dog whistle, right? <laughs> hey, did you hear that? So he was looking at and stuff, and in the on the tape, he's just totally staring at it, and he's like, what is What's up with that? that? Yeah, I know. He's like, that ain't a rape whistle, is it? No, it's a black guy whistle. Oh, yeah, Let right. me do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you right now. <laughs> well, you also interviewed Michael B. Jordan. Oh, yeah. And Michael B. Jordan, he's like the thing. He's yeah, so he's sexy. And he dresses cool. Everything's cool about him. But he's Killmonger, the villain, who, tell me, that wasn't a good villain. Oh, no, no, for sure. It's the kind of villain that's so good that you're like, maybe he's not that bad. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's what I talked to him about. Oh, cool. I read that you, you keep a journal. I do for my character backstories and stuff. I write journals for for them um, from like the earliest memory to you know the first kind of page of the script. Mm -hmm. And it kind of always just kind of it just gives me a backstory, a foundation of you know where my character's coming from. I think it worked because no, you made I, the greatest comic book villain of all time. That's a that's a come statement to life. <laughs> like he was insane and man, I was crying for you. My heart was bleeding for you. And I, I, that's that's a huge compliment because yeah. we just, you know, honestly, we wanted to, you know, in our mind, we wasn't thinking villain. We were just thinking about, you know, the circumstances of this guy, you know, mm -hmm. and what he would do to kind of like, you know, to, to, to free his people. He's something he was so passionate about. Man, he would do whatever it takes, you right. know, to in order to, uh, in, you know, ensure the survival of, of his people. And I think that's something that people can understand. Totally. Wow, he's so hot. I know he's so sexy. Well, and then in, in the um, movie, like he has these like scars all over his yeah, body, right? Like kind of like tribal scars, or it's kind of like a different version of tattooing in some cultures or right. whatever. Remember, they were for his kills, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's like has all these bumps, but it, it's like looks legit. They look like real bumps. No, totally. Yeah. I could. I was gonna go. I was thinking about maybe asking him about that. The like how they put them on. And, yeah. How long he sat in the makeup chair. Right. And then does that make you just want to scratch your whole body, or once you right. kill him off? So then the the next question I asked him is just because he does always look so good. Right. Excuse me, I just burped in y'all's ear. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But I asked him, you know, like, are you the stylish dude or do you have a stylish dude? Or uh -huh. And he was like, no, I, I have somebody. If you ever see me in sweats and a hoodie, he's all, that's, that's me. me. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime <laughs> else, like, it's the guy. That's kind of cool, though. That'd be like uh, something to not have to worry about. And then plus, when you have a great body like that, they can go get clothes Anything. at TJ Maxx and you'd look dope. Absolutely right. right. And this a... was right in the middle of all their, you know, red carpet appearances for okay. Black Panther. So yeah, go ahead and hit play. Yeah. What's the secrets about? Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stop real fast. 
Um, who is that? Okay, so these are the other two brothers. Okay. So these are the other two leaders of the tribe. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you met Winston is the gorilla tribe. Right, right, right. And Daniel, who's up for the Oscar non nomination right, for right. Get Out, he was the other tribe with the blankets. Right, right, right. Right. Okay, so Winston, the big the gorilla tribe dude, his mom was literally outside the door oh, of, wow. his, of the interviews. Okay. She was just so proud. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like, yep, that's right. I'm a single mom. Oh, nice. And my son Winston's in there. Do you have any questions? I can answer anything. I love moms that are <laughs> right. like that. That's so my mom. She was out there talking about how she didn't want him to be an actor. Oh, wow. So that's where I started asking. Okay. Him. So your mom is out there sharing yes. lots of secrets about you. Oh my God! <laughs> she wasn't happy though when you told her you weren't going to do law school and, be and to become an actor. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't happy about that. <laughs> but look at me now. Oh, look at it worked out yeah. for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as a kid, I kind of just wanted to be everything. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a dentist. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be an astronaut, a fire truck. You know, whatever. <laughs> fire you truck. Know, I wanted to be everything. <laughs> did you always want to be an actor? Where you did you want to be a fire truck too? No, I wanted to be. A Footballer, <laughs> soccer, soccer player. <laughs> and, uh, I wanted to be that, and uh, I was overweight, so no. <laughs> <laughs> so the football was like, we don't want you. Yeah, we don't want we don't you. Want you. Try something else. How about rolling away? <laughs> Man, uh, I, that was a fun room. The yeah, two yeah, of them. for sure. I love, um, for whatever reason. The pairing of a African American man and a British accent just works. I know, right? Yeah. Like, and it blows me away that yeah, it's hot. That when he starts talking, you're like, whoa. But I was told all this. Yeah, yeah, uh, I yeah. love that. They can do the American accent so good. I know it's insane, and like it's getting of, to the point where I can't tell who's from where. I agree. Because on a TV show or whatever, yeah. you're like, oh man, that guy's awesome. You're all, he's British. So many of the guys he's on Australian. Walking Dead, right? Right on Walking Dead are British, and right. even Rick Grimes, like the main dude are you know like you're like how i mean he's even got a, an atlanta accent how does he do it how come nobody ever talks about all those guys taking our american jobs those should be american <laughs> right? actors you wanted an american accent anyway you asses it's so funny you say that i have a list right here the 10 sexiest accents in the world oh that's funny it's got to be australian it's you want to do it when yeah, we come yeah, back or you want to do it now no we got the no, girls go next we can do okay. now all right, so the 10 sexiest accents in the world. Uh, Australian. Number one. Italian. Okay, oh, Italian French. is sexy. Wait, am I going, let me go 10 down. Okay. Okay, number 10. 2% of people like Japanese accents. Okay, I could see that. I mean, um, like, uh, yeah, okay. Brazilian, number okay. nine, 3% like, of people. We like the crotch. I don't know about the accent. Yeah, it's Portuguese, actually. <laughs> we like the bodies. The color. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, ooh, number eight. Americans, number eight on the oh, list. Wow. Only so, 4% of people in the survey thought that Americans had a sexy accent. I, I bet, like, if you're in England, when you see an American guy come to your school, you're a little taken, like, oh, wow, that's a cool accent, as we would be taken with yeah. a British guy. I saw a documentary on Spring Break that's on Netflix. Yeah. And it's about, like, just the mayhem and this, I think it was a British film team, just did this documentary on American Spring Break. Uh -huh. And there was this one guy on there, and he was so good looking, and he had an Australian accent, that he would just go into the street and just smile with his perfect white teeth uh -huh. and hit that accent. And girls were like, let's go yeah, do it. Right. And so he was, like, bringing <laughs> girls back into the room, and they were, like, documenting this whole thing on a regular documentary. And his friends were outside as he's getting laid again. And they're like, yeah, he's all... Um, <laughs> He said, when you have a, a, a wanker like that, he's, uh, you get even more. Uh, and so it's like, really? You're good looking, you're having the accent, and you're in doubt? Jerk. <laughs> oh, I thought he was a, he was a dick. Like, no, yeah, he was a like wanker. the wanker. Yeah. No, like no. Have oh, the wanker has like the that. Wanker. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Um, number seven. Wow, Australian is number seven. I thought huh. Aust people loved Australia. Probably because they can get annoying with the right. whole mate. Right, good eye, mate. Yeah. yeah. All their, like, they have slang. Yeah, they do. Right. They totally do. Number six, Scottish. Okay, that's a good one. I love you. What's up, Maria? <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. You, it just sounds like you're drunk. I love you. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> um, uh, number five of the sexiest uh, accents. Yes. Okay. Number five was Spanish. That's good. Everybody yes. likes this one. Spanish, Spanish, not Mexican Spanish. Well, right. I don't know Spanish, how you're gonna tell the difference. Right. I agree. Now, you. you it, Mm. You're gente. You can find. You I can know, hear but the what difference. I'm saying, no, there's very. I mean, of the same language, but see, there's going to be difference. Yes, <laughs> right. Difference. That's what we we're saying. See, Irish. Oh, that's kind of similar to the Scottish. Uh huh. But it's very different. Happier. I mean, 
Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, no, I don't know. Sometimes you're mad. Sometimes you hate. No, the you British. sound like you're happy. I don't know. Bolti Italian. Uh-huh. Was number three. And a banana, squish banana. <laughs> no, no, uh, <laughs> not that it's Italian accent. No, it's uh, like this. Uh, to me, uh, that one's a little annoying. Uh, I remember the guy in a Titanic. That's I was like, just... I was so glad <laughs> the thing that came in a fell on him. I was like, that's the worst Italian accent ever. Oh my God. Oh my God, the killing me. Exactly who I was thinking right. of when you started doing your Italian accent was that I can't dude believe from Titanic. Uh, James Cameron didn't the red flag of that. Uh, <laughs> he sounded like the chef of Boy RD. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and number two, the sexiest accent out there in the world, number two, the French. The French. Uh, uh-huh. This is right. You want to have this accent. If a good-looking guy comes up to you with this accent, a uh, beautiful woman, uh-huh. you are very turned on. And totally. they are invented the tongue kiss. So this is all good. And the French fry. Yes, the <laughs> French fries, the French toast, the French dressing. See, say beautiful again. It's beautiful. See, it sounds, it just sounds pretty. French yes, is very pretty. everything sounds beautiful yes. in French tongue. And the number one accent that in the world that people find the sexiest is? Rainforest. I don't know. <laughs> Both of you shut up. No. English. 17% of oh, the vote went to English. Yeah, it really is. Yes. You know, what's the Kingsman? Yeah. Austin uh, Powers. <laughs> oh, yes, baby. Mm. You know, it's really good, especially with a good looking guy. There's um, a new challenge show that I'm watching. It's the MTV challenge, mm-hmm. you know, for all the people. And this, they brought in a bunch of Brits from MTV England. Okay. okay. So people that we don't even know. And oh my God, there's this British guy that's on there and he's like hot. <laughs> and he's like all buffed out and he talks like this and so everybody's like in the hell house. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blazing Hit Radio. Better music. Less commercials. More Larry and Kathy. Um, okay, so. Yeah, tell us the story. So yesterday was President's Day so a lot of people had it off. We did. Okay. And a lot of people had it off from school. Okay, yeah. So, and in- you know, you want you want the kids to know, hey, this is the day we honor Donald Trump. We're gonna have a big thing for him, <laughs> right? Nah, <laughs> <laughs> just sleep in. Yeah, <laughs> go shovel the walk. Right. So we're planning. Um, we were filming. Okay. So I we planned a while ago. The the kids will have it off. So let's film something for the kids that will show what they can do for spring break coming up. So oh, cool. like, you know, so we went to like a tea party. Oh, cool. Cause Denver date night, it's this company in town and they actually, they have the best connections to and all these cool different options in town Events. for you to go to dates. Oh, cool. So, but they just don't do dates. Like, so you can take your husband like ax throwing. They oh, have cool. like connections to go to that airplane, like in 50 shades of gray where the, there's no engines and you just float. Oh, that's you know cool. how they like pull glider. you up? Right. Yeah, the glider right. thing. Right. Like, So she's got like the best connections, right? Okay. So we went to some tea party, so I needed the girls with me. So they came to the TV station. So like a fancy um, ladies have sandwiches and tea. But it's for kids. Oh, okay. Right. So she's kind of, we're kind of doing a special on what you can do with your kids over spring break. Okay, oh, because you brought the girls. You can Perfect. take them to this place for crafts. You can take them to this place for this, or okay. you can go to this tea party, whatever. So my mom brings the girls to the TV station and they come in as I'm already on TV. Okay. Have they been there while you're on? Yes. Because you, they've been on the show. Yes. Avery's Avery cool has. with it. Gianna hasn't been there as much. Last time she was on, she cried the whole time. Okay. So I was a little nervous, okay. you know, mm-hmm. but it's been at least a year. So I was whatever. So we're like live on TV uh-huh. while they come in. So Avery comes in and she's like old school. She immediately knows, go sit in the chairs Right. Over where the audience is sitting. And Gia makes a beeline to you. Right, no, no. Mommy. Gia comes in and all of a sudden it was like superstar just walked in the building. She just waved at me and kept walking to all the other people. <laughs> she, I was like, who is this child? <laughs> Even kids make a beeline to Dutra. <laughs> yeah, right. They're like, <laughs> right. you hold me. <laughs> My daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Real daddy. <laughs> so anyway, they were cool. And then they got on the show and they were, they were really good. Oh, like, good. G- although Gianna... They got on and Chris, uh, Avery sat on Chris's lap and she cuddled with him and they cuddled and they were so cute. And Gianna just kept sticking her tongue out the whole time uh, at the camera. So she was like, eh. Uh, That's her new thing. She likes to stick her tongue out. Great. Miley right. Cyrus. I wonder where she got it. 
probably for me because I always stick my tongue out. So anyways, everything's cool. The show's done. Yay. Everybody survived. Nothing went crazy. Uh-huh. Time for us to leave. Well, everybody's talking to me. I got the girls. I got my bag. Everything's talking. We go to get on the elevators and I don't realize I'm not on the elevator, but my two daughters are. And now the doors have shut. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, girl, bye. And I, I immediately, guess which one out of the two freaked out? Uh, Avery. Avery. <laughs> so, mommy, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, you can like hear yeah. it going down. It's, well, right. let's see, the thing was... I. Thank God, there's only three floors. Right, okay. so, so they're I'm coming like, back. Right, As if they don't get out in the lower garage. So technically, I guess five floors, but right, they hit nobody hit a button. Thank oh, God. So they were so, still there. So they were more or less were right there. Oh. So I'm just trying to yell to her, "Chill out." As soon as the doors open, I'm right here. I'm on the right. other side. You haven't moved. And she's, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> She's just going crazy, which is making everyone else that I was just saying goodbye to freak, freak out. out. They're like, oh, should we call 911? Oh, my yeah. God. So Mary, Mary, Cut the cable. <laughs> Mary, the producer, and her two girls are like, we'll get in the other elevator and we'll go down to the parking garage. To make sure they don't go out there. <laughs> Stranger she, danger! She jumps in that elevator and heads down. Meanwhile, I'm like, they're still at I your hear floor. them right, right on the other side. I just Help! for some reason the doors wouldn't open. Uh-huh. So finally, after Mary's elevator moves, because that that became the primary right, elevator, it opens and right. Gianna's just like, what's up? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Avery was like tears and crying and I thought the elevator door was going to open and Greg would be holding both of them. Yeah, I've got saved them. them. I've, I've yeah. saved them. New dad. <laughs> right. But it had me laughing because just happens last night on Modern Family. Uh-huh. Uh, Cam and Mitch, they go to some resort. Uh-huh. They have Lily with them. Right. And they're talking about what great parents they are, how yeah. awesome of a day they've had. And they walk off the elevator and left Lily on the elevator. Yeah. So, you know, and Cam her. turned around and like, started was- prying open the doors and was like, <laughs> ah, Lily, I've got you. Don't worry. You know, so I was just thinking, I wonder how Larry would have reacted had the girls oh, man. gotten slammed, gotten shut in the other side of the elevator. Life imitating art. Yes. So you're saying I'm Cam no. now because you saw some gay guy do that, <laughs> no, and now I'm, I'm stereotype. Cam. I saw Cam do it, and I wondered how would Larry do it. Then? I did because I do think that you and Mitch, you and Mitchell, right? Cam and Mitch. Yeah, Cam and Sorry. Mitch. Sorry. That Cam and Mitch do a lot of, they say a lot of stuff that you and Chris do. Wow, way to stereotype oh, us. Oh, Lord, are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, it's okay, Melissa McCarthy on, um, what's the other Mike show? and Molly. Mike and Molly. Right, totally. Right. You, she, I would I never mean, pigeonhole you like that. <laughs> Call or text us now. I'm so excited. On the Yolo Rum phone line. Alexa, will you be my friend? Of course we can be friends. 303-728-3420. You seem very nice. Hey, if you want tickets to the premiere of Game Night, make sure you say hi to producer Bolty, who'll be out repping for Blazing It Radio um, at the movie premiere tonight. That movie looks so funny. Um, Chris Prente said he hasn't laughed that loud, out loud, that long in a long time. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's cool. Do you guys do game nights? Uh, yeah, we, we used to do Monopoly yeah. Monday for a while, just at my apartment building. Oh, but, no? Yeah. Are you kidding? We kind of got <laughs> burned out. Yeah, that's what caused that one guy to like get so mad that he took a ladder and tried to come, yeah. come crawl in your right. place to exactly. get the Monopoly pieces. I'm kind of pissed at Monopoly now. <laughs> You're right, exactly. You should sue Monopoly, right. Mike. Uh-huh. Some people, I mean, it can either tear a family apart or bring them together. Uh-huh. Right. Games. Depends on the game. Totally. Uh, people on the text line this morning, uh, let's see, the celebrity weather announcements, Larry, were everything. <laughs> Um, I did these school closures earlier, uh, and I figured I would read them as Morgan Freeman and Arnold Schwarzenegger and a Tiny from T.I. and Tiny. Well, you might have to do it again. They go on to say, imagine those people who have a delay or closure hearing the good news from Morgan Freeman <laughs> and Tiny. It was a double blessing. Morning. Thanks for having me laugh on a cold, rough morning. It's very cold out there. As cold as when I drove Mrs. Daisy. <laughs> Larry, I'm so sad you came to Portland and didn't tell me. I live in Portland. I moved to Portland 10 years ago. You guys are my favorite people. My name's Dana. I'm sorry. I we didn't... actually had a listener in Portland. I know. We could have hung out. And it, we really had a good time there. I love your city. You could have left your weed with Dana. I know. And um, they had this famous like waterfall uh-huh. that you have to drive to. And... Um, it was like all blocked off because there had been fire. So uh, they're like last fire season. So it's like you couldn't really get to it so we could see it from a distance. But it's just really famous waterfall. It's beautiful. Um, like they do movies and stuff there? Um, I'd imagine for sure. It definitely looks famous. 
You and Chris on the text line says, you and Chris, your husband, definitely brought the snow with you, Larry. I know. When we landed, it was starting to snow. In mm-hmm. fact, when the plane was coming down into Denver, we had to pass a thick layer of storm. Oh, crazy. So the, the plane was all, you know, goes... Turbulence. Turbulence. And Chris is so used to it, he doesn't even care. And I'm, like, clutching his arm. Right. Like, Christopher's shaving. Right. And I'm freaking <laughs> out. the turbulence. Right, right, right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Happy birthday, Bolty. Oh, Have yeah. fun over the weekend with you. Oh, what were you oh, doing? That? Oh, that's wow. my that's my twelve year old uh stepsister now. I wait, no. What my brother married into her That's your niece. Yeah, my niece. Okay. Step niece. Twelve year old niece. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> niece in law. <laughs> She's the best, though. Thanks, Lex. Oh. oh, that's cute. Somebody else said, happy birthday, Bolty. Enjoy your day. Yeah, what are you going to do today, Bolty? Should we take you out to get something like a, a pancake or something? I mean, I'll hang out with you guys. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. got to take Bolty to somewhere for your birthday, but it's got to be on my way home. And, <laughs> By uh, Stapleton. Yeah. Right. <laughs> By noon. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one says, another one, Christy says, happy birthday, Mike. Um, let's, this one says, let's keep in mind celebrities paid for theaters full of people to see Black Panther. So the numbers are skewed. Well, yeah, but I mean, that doesn't really matter. Really? Hater. That's, that's right? what you're bringing up? That's what you're bringing up? And it uh, wasn't that many. You had the Boys and Girls Club in Harlem. They no, got, no, but there was tons of more celebrities that had, were coming out. Right. Octavia Spencer. Right. Totally bought out some theaters. Right. I kept seeing different stories of different celebs uh, doing it. Like, um, Diddy did it. And yeah. a couple other people. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, those people are going to, they're just doing something awesome because this movie's so awesome for black people. Right. But I mean, it was going to be a hit movie regardless because yeah. it's so badass. Right. But again, every that's other your movie point. had that option too. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right. Although you don't see a lot of white celebrities going, I'm going to get some tickets for some white kids. That <laughs> yeah. would look weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I think it was good. Like everyone needs to see it. Oh, no, no, for sure. Um, happy birthday, Bolty. Oh, they spell it with a Y. That's so cute. <laughs> it's B O L T E. Yes. Uh, love having you as part of the dream team every morning now. You're great. He Yay. is great. Happy birthday, Mike Bolty. Uh, I'm proud of you. Morning, T- Larry. Take care of my baby boy. Uh, oh, who's that? It's my dad. Oh, okay. okay. And take then, care of my boy. That's kind of weird that your dad said P.S. spank him. Because uh, he Big knows that lull. Mike and I are close. <laughs> He, capital lol. <laughs> capital lol. I'm uh, also, I'll definitely spank him, but not on the radio. Oh, hey, look. There's your dad and your brother sending a picture in. That's me. Oh, wait. We oh. look the same. <laughs> that does look like your brother. It looks like Alex. I'm that's sorry. Well, that was you and your your dad? Where were yeah, you? Yeah, we were weekend? hunting. That was That's an old picture. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you get anything on that hunt? No. It's like <laughs> 11 years. No elk. It's so funny, too, because every time he comes back and he's all, I didn't kill anything. I'm all, Yes. yes. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and nothing killed you. Yes. No, right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, yeah, sorry. I was looking at your picture of you mm-hmm. and your dad. That's so cute. So if you want to have a long life and you want to, like, be around forever, they start Forever? That's a long well, time. you know, make it to around 100. Well, I mean, I would imagine that's great if you've planned for it. Yeah. But if you hit, like, 85 and you ran out of money... And you've been smoking cigarettes right. your whole life. Yeah. And, right, right. Yeah. Well, a study came out yesterday that said if you, that they asked like the, the people that made it to 100. Whoa. And most of them said, yeah, ouch. I've smoked. Yeah, they said ouch. They said ouch. For sure. Everything hurts. Yeah, I've smoked. Yeah, I ate bad. But what I did do was I stayed positive about life and I had really good people around me, really good friends. So mm-hmm. once again, your social circle and and your, your happiness level and your mood is what can keep you alive even if you're doing stuff that you know is bad for your body. Oh great. I'm gonna be alive forever. <laughs> I have a great support system. Yeah, you I have do. amazing you people. Do. Always you laughing. Do. Right. I better start eating bacon again. And now a massive <laughs> new study just came out to top the one from yesterday that says the key to living a long life it's some good old alcohol. Yeah, oh, because yeah. The, they show those people who are like, this Chinese woman is 115 yeah. and has sake every day. Yeah. Right. It's those people that keep their routine. So yeah. like if you're like, I've had a steak and an egg every morning for 100 years. Right. And then all of a sudden she's all, I'm giving up steak and eggs. And then she dies. Exactly. Right. Right. It's kind of like uh, Betty White. 
Right. She's old, like 96 or something, but she says a hot dog and vodka. That's what she has every day. Right. She sticks the hot dog in the vodka. <laughs> right. However, however. So a massive new study by a neurologist named Claudia at the University of California. Alcohol is the key to living a long life. She studied more than 1,700 people over 90 years old for the past 15 years. Hashtag YOLO. Those mm-hmm. who drink around two glasses Rum. of beer or wine a day were 18% less likely to die early. People who exercised between 15 and 45 minutes a day were only 11% less likely to die. So take that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But I got th- you by 7% more just by drinking my alcohol and not working out. I know, but the people that run are like, yeah, but we got laid 100 times more than yeah, you. That's yeah, that's probably true. Yes. Mm-hmm. You definitely, your pieces and parts are a lot more attractive than right. mine. The alcohol, <laughs> saggy skin. But right. I'm happy. We drink because we don't exercise. <laughs> right. yeah, we're envious. Um, Claudia, the researcher, also found it's better to be a little bit ha 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 chubby chubby yeah because if you're like super fit like um you run the risk of having something that you didn't know you had right. so it's like everything looked amazing but then you went on one roller coaster ride and there went your aneurysm <laughs> right you know what I mean? right. it's like all that running for nothing <laughs> yeah. you should have had into lavas also you always hear that when you're older you can break a hip you break your hip and then you're out. Oh, no, no. You like, fall, you break a bone, you're done. You become a bird. So when then, you become a senior care facility person, like you, like your, bur- your bones are so brittle that a one fall will do you in. Totally. And it's, I honestly feel that like once you fall, like the protocol is, well, they fell and we can't fix all that. Yeah. Stop feeding them. Make them right, comfy. Right. And I then start giving that. them those morphine drops. You fall into a box. Right. And they're like, sure. this is how we handle this. This right. is just how, you know. Right. But what the can they is. do? It's like, that's like putting together like some sort of like, you know, bird. Like mm. you know, that bird that got ran over by a car. You're like, oh, let's piece the bird back together. Like artifact. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I get that. But there's still got to be another way. Like. Don't administer the morphine drip until the people are ready. Like people are get pushed no, but into... they need no. They need the morphine drip because all their bones are broken, so they're in a bunch of pain. Okay, so they need the morphine drip right away. What they should do is also give each family a little morphine drip. <laughs> right, they're like here, no open lie. mouth, drop, 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 <laughs> and now we're all gonna see grandma off. But people that have a little bit more uh, body fat on them, they might not break the hip when right. they fall. Exactly, yeah. it's just gonna be a br- bad bruise. Right now, then you, you had just... a marshmallow right. protecting you. <laughs> 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 and the best thing of all, people that had daily hobbies oh. people who worked on a hobby at least two hours every day were 21 percent less likely to die so more than alcohol right right and that could be anything like you know my mom still does her jewelry yep. all yeah. the time and that's yeah. like her thing and i you know i believe that to me that's what like was going to keep her going for a really long time no i totally agree right so thanks mom i'm gonna have to pay for all that <laughs> no you're gonna live to 112 <laughs> yeah <laughs> Blazing Hit Radio. I love that morning show. Now with more us. They wake me up. Better music, less commercials, more Larry and Kathy. In the morning, in the shower. Um, I saw a meme, um, and it was about Black Panther. Uh-huh. And um, it was showing the Black Panther and his sister doing their handshake. Yes. And they, they kind of have the special pull it in, right. and then they and do then this. And they uh, end with the Wakanda. Right. And so the meme says, yeah, pay attention, y'all. We have a new handshake. And I was pretty sure that wasn't for me. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's black people going, we have a new handshake. Yeah. Last thing they want to see is me and Bolty and Kathy trying to do it all off sync. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, I mean, I I interviewed the uh, people of Wakanda. Yeah, and they were, you were in. And when, when we met, we did the Wakanda cross. Oh, you did it? And when I said goodbye to the ladies, we did the Wakanda cross. Wow, so she got a pass. I think I think that we all should do, maybe not the handshake part, but you end with the cross, right. like uh-huh. Wakanda. No, no, for sure. Because that could also be Wonder Woman. Right, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I saw at the um, NBA All-Star game, um, one of the dunk contest members, because Bo- Boswick is that Chadwick Boseman. So was he there. was on he was on the sidelines and he went over to him and he put a mask on the guy who was doing the dunk competition, the Black Panther yeah, mask. Too. Oh, cool. And then they did the handshake and he went and did a dunk in tribute to Black Panther. It oh, was nice. cool. That's cool. That's dope. That's and, really cool. And then did you guys see Fergie blow it oh, on the national God. anthem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, we're going to talk about that in Trash and Bash, but uh, f- Josh Dumel brought her flowers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> as you want to. As you want to. I mean, 
mean, we heard, we heard about it right after it went viral. You know, like like we were sitting up in bed because we didn't watch it live when it happened. And Mr. Fisher was like, oh, God, Fergie botched the anthem. And I was like, yeah, let's look at it. Like, really, she was kind of like, kind of. I see where she was going with it, kind of like a jazzy kind of interpretation is what she was aiming for. She was hearing to mix it up a little she bit. She was hearing something yeah, totally different. It was different. bad. Like, it, somebody, the fact that somebody didn't tag her in the rehearsal and go, and say, do uh, a regular version. It's not coming across like you hope it is. Right. Yeah. So you interviewed uh, Black Panther. Chadwick Boseman, yeah. T'Challa. Black right. Black Panther. I did. And what did and he have so to say? so sexy. So in the beginning, I just asked him, this didn't make this clip, but I asked him, when did you finally know you were Black Panther? Uh-huh. He said, when you go up on stage at Comic-Con with Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans. And it was all... And, and it says Black Panther. That's when you got to accept on Black Panther. But then I asked him about... I heard he had a big family. Oh, okay. So I asked him, are you the Black Panther of your family? Like everybody comes to you like, for I help. have an idea for a business and yep. I wanted to start a I need thing. your money, et cetera. Right, right. You're the successful one. I've also heard you have a huge family. I do. Huge. So are, do you get calls from your mom all the time saying, cousin so-and-so needs your help? This is, you know, like, are you now oh, no. the Black Panther of your tribe, <laughs> personally? Ah, uh... Well, they don't they, they don't call my mom because my mom probably would be like, leave him alone. Oh, okay, okay. But, uh, <laughs> she's yeah. your gatekeeper. She's my, she's, yeah, yes. Um, but yeah, definitely I, I have to help some people out. It's just, it's, it's just part of being an actor in Hollywood, I think, when people see you doing well. Um, they're coming. They're, yeah, and I don't. But it, it seems like that's who you are, though, that you truly I I'll, I'll help you. I'll, I'll I'll help you if it's if it's the right thing to do. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you can hurt people by helping them too much too. That's right. You know what's crazy is um, when he was in he was one of the Captain America movies to make when he made his debut. Yeah. In the, those scenes, and um, he was a badass in that. That's why everybody was so stoked because to me he was like just different than everybody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, he just is. I couldn't explain his suit at the time or how, right. the, all, how all the technology with right. it works. But right. you were like, man, that kick ass with the scratching. Like he literally clawed the the shield, Captain America's yeah, yeah, shield, yeah, yeah, and yeah, left yeah. a mark on it. Yeah. It's crazy. Which is because the, his blade, his claws are made of the same stuff. Right. His shield is made of the right. vibranium that the right. claws are made of, which totally is cool. So exciting. Yeah. No, it's totally cool. So, um, and I can't wait for the new Avengers. Oh, no, no, for sure. That, that all of them are in. Right. You got to stay for both Easter eggs when you see the movie. At the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of the, the second one? The one at the very end of the movie? Oh, amazing. Yeah? Freaking you out. You were excited to see that person? Yeah, aren't okay. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. 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 I think it's funny, though. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. I'm not going to say so anything hard else. To talk okay, about. I won't say anything else. But it's definitely the second Easter egg. Right, exactly. I um, won't but, say anything else. And then you also talked to the girls. I did talk to the girls, and we talked about the fact that they were bald. Right. Right. And still so hot. Right. But yet Deny, the leader of the guards, she actually is also Michonne in Walking Dead and has a bunch of dreads. Uh -huh. So I asked her, is that what you do when you get the dreads off? You just whip them right off and throw them at somebody? <laughs> drag queen style. Right. Drag queen style. Uh -huh. Okay. Hang on. Oh, Bolty's getting it. That's right. Right. Uh oh man, that was such a cool like uh they're like the coolest security team yeah, I've no, ever no, seen no. protecting anybody. Right. Yeah. So, so when you uh, ripped your wig off, I was dying. Like, it, when you're done with the dreads of Michonne, is that how you ripped that off? Are you like, I'm done with this? I do love my dreads, though. I do, I do. What I love is that they're both exp they're both really diverse expressions of, you know, the way that women of African descent can wear their hair. But I love that, you know, how often do you see dreadlocks? You don't. On a screen. Right. So, and, and how often do you see a bald head? Mm -hmm. You know? So, I, I mean, I kind of love them both. I want them both to stay, you know, who they are. I think that's great. You're right. And, you know, hair is such a such a crutch for women on their standard of beauty and so for you I to love be that. rocking I loved it, how right. subversive that was when I read it I was like I love this because I was like that is so cool because it's really saying this does not define me my femininity is it's extremely not intact right and it's very very expressed but not through this 
Yeah. Well, easy to so. say when you have a nice little small round perfect head. She does. Like both of you guys. And yeah. Yeah, it, like that wouldn't work on some women. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not all of us can pull it off for sure. But she totally had a fade going in it and her hair that was growing back. And Lupita Nyong'o, she's just stunning. Yeah, I can't wait to see it again. I'm definitely going to see it again. But that was really cool that you got to meet everybody. It was totally cool. So In one fell swoop, you were given the pass. I totally was. I'm back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> And now, I know you guys are gonna photograph me. I know it makes a cool photo. I got a cool ass car. You know, I'm like, I got a dope ass outfit on. It's all good. Celebrity Trash and Bash. With Larry, Kathy, and Wiggins. Sponsored by the Mike Soil Law Firm. Call 303 Good Law. Here's Kathy J. I say we just start with Fergie. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> poor thing. Out of the way. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, um, it, oh, it, it's Fergie. funny to see all the players' faces. Right, when she was doing it. Yeah. I mean, like, they would cut to, cut to them, and you could tell that they were like, Oh, Is my this, God. What's, what's happening? Because she started in, and you're like, it was okay. Too- uh, it was a bad note, like, in the beginning. Well, yeah, and it was like a, a version you've never heard. Like, somebody's never sexed up. The all the Star Spangled Banner, you and know it didn't I mean? come across as sexy as I think she was hearing it in her head. Like I think it was more of like right? a jazzy, like whoa, yeah, <laughs> Mr. <Our> President. <laughs> right, it was <laughs> happy birthday. But you said it wasn't sexy. That's sexy. It didn't, she no, tried. Right, she tried to do right, that. Right, right, like right. nothing. It just didn't. You don't do that to. You don't undress Uncle Sam. Hit it. Wow. That is horrible. It's jazzy. Steph Curry's like, what? Is this real? Is she trying to do this on purpose? I think at this point, everybody's hoping it'll get better. You know what I mean? Right. Everybody's like, let's hope it pans out. Let her hit the notes. Right. Oh, God. Now they're looking around at each other like... LeBron James is like, don't put that camera on me. Stay focused, stay focused. Chance the Rapper is dying. (laughs) Anthony Anderson is like, come on now, hit that note, hit the note, Fergie. Oh. She thinks she's doing a great job. <laughs> it's been done way worse. This isn't the worst version. No, but the way that... Oh, no. <laughs> Look at the players. They're all... Has somebody told her she ain't black? Like, they're looking down, and then they're looking up over at her, and then they're looking in anywhere. The black-eyed peas aren't here to save you now. Okay, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, she hit the note. Here we go. For the <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel is dying. And the <laughs> LeBron James is trying not to crack up. Quit yelling at us. Uh, oh, uh, okay, so halfway so. through is when Josh Dumel ordered those flowers. Totally. Hello, one eight hundred flowers. Yep. <laughs> uh, the ex Josh Dumel. They announced their divorce divorce five months ago, but Josh Dumel felt really bad for his baby mama. He's all not end. not bad enough to get back with her. <laughs> right, right. Just I felt bad. <laughs> He's all I've been living with that singing this whole time. <laughs> right. So imagine how I feel having to hear that every day. She always thinks she's sexier than she is. <laughs> he was spotted outside Fergie's place Monday with their four-year-old son, Axel. He was dressed down. They were just walking in some beautiful roses to give to mama to help her feel better. <laughs> right. I think like Mariah Carey called her and was like, don't sweat it. You know, like I've been <laughs> raked over the coals for, for that's something really not, like that. That's really not the call you want. Right. From- <laughs> well, I mean, at least another diva's like got your back. Like, Did mm-hmm. she really do that, though? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's cool of her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't. I didn't hear that. So that was cool of her to do. She that. looked good though. Yeah. She oh no. Real good. She's got that going for her mm-hmm. for sure. Ed Sheeran is sparking rumors that he married fiance Sherry or Cherry Seaborn. Okay, wait, who's that? Ed Sheeran. He, but who's the girl he married? He was flashing a ring on his wedding finger. Uh, she, I assume she's a model. Oh, okay, of course. Of course. Well, that's what he likes. I know, and it's it's nice that he can get that now. No, right. Because of his talent never. and his sexy lyrics and his money. Model never would have dated him before. Are you crazy? I know, and it's kind of crazy because there's a show called Lookalikes. Uh, it's like a kind of like The Office. It's a British show. Mm-hmm. And they have an Ed Sheeran lookalike on there, and he looks just like him. Like <laughs> He does look great. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, like to the point where he could go... To his bank and get some money. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't have my, uh, my Russell, wallet. Not to have my ATM card. Yep. Uh, so um, he's been he's been like flirting about the idea of being engaged to Cherry since the new year. Okay? okay, but now he's got a plain gold ring and he was wearing it on his wedding finger. Um, and uh, he said Pat in the past that he finds himself getting really excited about kitchen appliances. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And the thing is, I'm sorry he. Um it's like, you know, when you're famous and you're successful, you get somebody hot. That's what you get. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. like Sam Smith has a boyfriend who's a model. Yes. You know what right. I mean? I mean, like. And he's not all that. And, no. But he's talented. I think Sam Smith, once he dropped the weight, he was all that. Right, right, right. For sure. Well, no, I mean, he's only going to be as all that as he can, but he's not all that. He's the next George Michael. Oh, I don't know. Well, Is that I mean, what they say? Well, yeah. I mean, he's a great singer, but he's not all that. Okay. Yes. So we'll see if uh, Ed confirms that they are actually dating, or, or I mean engaged. Someone that we know is actually engaged. Well, congratulations, Tony Braxton. You did it. She uh, got Birdman. For real. For real. Wow. So in other words, um, she's been single this whole time, or she's been married before. No, she was married before, and then remember okay. she got sick, and then there was the whole you bankruptcy. You're taking the money out of my kid's mouth. Right, right, right. Right. And she's wearing five hundred dollar jeans. Now Birdman is he's little Wayne Birdman. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. So you would think he'd be going for somebody way younger. <laughs> you <laughs> but I mean? Tony Braxton is hot. No, no, she's flawless. Trust right. me, she's super talented. But I mean, she's also over twenty. Right. She's fifty. He's forty nine. So he's oh. she's a year older than him. So I'm sure his family's like, thank God you picked somebody that. Was close to your age because all those guys are dating 21 year olds, they mm-hmm. are totally. Right. And the 21 year olds only want your money, but Tony Braxton also only wants your money because money she's broke. <laughs> she's broke. <laughs> we all know about Tony Braxton, right? The only reason she's skinny because she's broke, yep. And the only reason she does Braxton family values is because she's, she's broke. broke. So, rumors have been around these two for a lot for a couple years now, about right. Their love for each other, so it's really cool that you know that they're just like together. Tony Braxton says he's a gentleman. He's such a gentleman. He opens doors. I promise you, he does everything. Birdman is very traditional when it comes to values and family. She's like, he makes me make breakfast. I have to clean the house, do the laundry. (laughs) They each have two kids from previous relationships, but they are officially engaged. A giant yellow diamond engagement ring. Which was paid for by the money he owes little Wayne. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Ooh, actually, Larry, it could have been paid for by the Braxton family values since this is going into the season six trailer. Oh, it brought to you by Keepsake. There you go. (laughs) Hey, work it. The Kardashians do. Right. Right? Okay. Um... Let's go talk about Black Panther. Yeah, that was a great movie. Everybody has to see it. I'm going to see it again. $235 million over the four-day weekend. And now sources are saying that Michael B. Jordan and Lupita Nyong'o are dating. Which is so cool because I guess, you know, like, you know, you they're both worthy of each other. You know oh, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, they're both hot. Right. He's hot. She's hot. Totally. They rub their hotness together. Yes. And on their on their press tour that they've been going through. Uh-huh. Um, they nobody really started noticing how giddy and flirty the two were with uh, were with each other until recently, when they had some sort of bet, in which Jordan lost the bet. So part of the punishment is he has to do push-ups whenever Lupita Nyong'o says so. 
So while they're waiting backstage before The View, while they were waiting to go on Sirius Satellite, she just comes in and says, Do start push-ups. doing your push-ups. That's hilarious. So the two of them engaging in all this playful banter on social media, everybody's, all, hmm. everybody's totally starting to watch it. And then they get into the interviews and she's all touchy on him and he's all shy around her. Yeah, they're hot together. No, they are definitely. That's a that's a really hot couple. <laughs> Man, she looks like uh, at every premiere she's been to, she wears like this different dress and she just looks crazy amazing she looks crazy amazing. yeah she's beautiful and finally speaking of superheroes ryan reynolds and deadpool ryan reynolds says kids who are fighting cancer can see any movie they want even an r-rated yay i agree he's all now you just have to tell their parents that <laughs> right exactly <laughs> um he said there was some pictures that he posted yesterday visiting some kids that have cancer um and the kids came to the set of deadpool 2 oh cool okay so he called it one of the best parts of playing the big red jackass <laughs> is that kids and parents come and he just likes to see the smile. Well, and it's crazy because there are some parents that are like, you know, because that movie Deadpool was definitely, um, you know, violent and naughty, but it was kind of like a great movie. No, so for I, could, sure. I could see some people letting their certain kids watch that and also like... Um, some parents probably let their kids watch Sausage Party, which is great. Okay. Yeah, that I, one's bad. <laughs> that one's bad. And we tried to tell everybody, we were like, do not turn your back on Sausage Party and yeah. think your kids are okay watching it. Right, because it looks like a kid movie, but it's, it's not. It's not. Totally not. not. <laughs> so, um, somebody, though, had to throw a re- uh, you know, uh, downer wow. on the comments, and she said... Guys, Deadpool is an R-rated movie, and those kids are watching it. Something is wrong here. Um, so Ryan Reynolds responded with a great response. He said, yep, Deadpool is rated R. If my kid went through a fraction of the crap that these kids are dealing with daily, I think they can watch whatever the hell they want. Just my two cents. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, for real. Right. Like, who are you to say? Are you? Do you know what these kids go through? Right. Yeah. If their parents say cool, do it. Right, for sure. Right. And that's your Trash and Bash. Blazing Hit Radio. Better music. Less commercials. More Larry and Kathy. You're damn right about that. Because <laughs> we're part of Fat America. <laughs> yeah, Fat America. Mm. A lot more people are wishing you a happy birthday on the text line, Bolte. Thank guy. Thank you guys. And someone said Betty White is dead. No, she's not. She's not. I hate when people go all crazy with who's dead. It's like if you see something on Facebook, go to TMZ or CNN because they'll definitely have a picture of the real dead person. Right. So if it's not on TMZ or on CNN or whatever, it happened. it's not happening. Betty White lives! <laughs> Unbeknownst to us, they just posted on Facebook. I mean, on TMZ, <laughs> Betty White has died. I hope not. I really like Betty I'll White. I'll double check. Okay, please do. Okay, so... Nope, uh, Black China still has a sex tape. That's the number one story. Okay, that's what's hilarious is, oh my God, you're kidding. A sex tape leaked? Come on, Black China. Like, you yeah. didn't leak it yourself because your name hasn't really been All out over. and about since you left the Kardashians. Um, Whoever he is, he's hot. No, he's a good-looking dude. Whoever she has the sex tapes with. Yeah, you know, he's a good-looking guy. Okay, so Chipotle is now testing quinoa. Okay, uh, what are they testing it? They're like, um, do people like it? They're going to put it in, uh, like, the meat? Well, I hope it's not as bad as that queso. I never tried their queso. Well, you pro- it was, it was uh, what not... Was it, what was wrong with it? It was just too healthy. Like, I don't yeah. go to queso to get healthy. I go to queso because I expect cheese. Velveeta and Rotel. Yeah, that would be, that is the best queso. Um, I think, you know, Qdoba nails their queso. Oh, no, hell yeah. So yesterday, Chipotle started offering quinoa at yeah. the test kitchen in New York City. As a side dish? Or I don't get it. Is, is it People can to- add it to your salads. You can use it instead of your rice. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Mm-hmm. No Basically work. little pasta balls. Yeah, totally. Little tiny pasta balls. No, they're so oh. itty bitty. Like you right. have to have like some sort of crazy strainer to clean them at first. Right. And then like quinoa actually makes your body burn fat. And so it's actually good for you. Yeah, no, quinoa is good for right, you. Right, right. I like it when it's got a bunch of sauce mixing it all Right, around. for sure. <laughs> Onions and tomatoes and all that stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking about the sauce. Oh, okay. You're talking about onions and tomatoes. Well, I'm just saying like quinoa <laughs> salads, they're really good. And they even make quinoa chips now and all kinds of stuff. Lucky Charms has now announced the new marshmallow. 
What is it? They got rid of a couple. They did. They got rid of some classics. Okay. I don't remember which ones, yeah, exactly. but they got rid of them. And now they're bringing in, dun, 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 all you young ladies will be so happy, the magical unicorn. Oh, that's cool. Unicorn, and it poops at rainbows. <laughs> um, so what, guys can't like unicorns? Why no, but usually that? the girls like unicorns. Uh, I know plenty of gay guys that are all about the unicorn. Really? Like who? Oh, Chris Parenti. <laughs> Uh, me, Christopher, <laughs> you like our friend Lance, like like every time Kevin, you, every Donald, time you see a unicorn, you Tyler, have to have it on your shirt. Aldo, Jeffrey, Zachary. Now he's just making it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So General Mills announced it's the new magical unicorn. It's going to have a white unicorn head with blue and purple swirls on the mane and the horn. Wow, that's getting pretty specific. Now you're, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Boxes of Lucky Charms with the unicorn marshmallows are already ready to ship out. They should be everywhere by next month. Although they're going to have to rethink their slogan. Ha, Lucky Charms, then I'll make you horny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't go, sound right. Go back to the drawing board. Right. You don't want to say that with kids. <laughs> that's not happening. And they did a list of all of the sodas out there. And... What are your, what's your favorite soda of all time? 1,800 people were asked by the website Ranker. Okay. I 1,800 people voting on the best sodas of all time. Okay, I'm going to say, obviously, your Coke and your Pepsi are your, going to be your rivals. So your I'm top talking two. everything from Sunkiss Orange, Barks okay. Root Beers, A&W Root Beers, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, Fine. Cherry Coke, everything that's out there. Ugh. Give me your top two. I'm going to go Mr. Pibb and Dr. Pepper. Okay. Uh, do you guys remember Surge? I do remember Surge. It was, was like, like kind a of a Mountain Dew. Dew. Right. I really liked that back then. Because it was cheap? Maybe because it was rare. Like it was hard to find. It was kind of like the common man's Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it took the, uh, definitely took off the gunk off the battery, at, or the, off yeah. the battery, your car <laughs> yeah. battery. Well, um, what is yours? Uh, mine, would, mine would be Coke. Okay. Or Sprite. How about Squirt? Yeah, there was Squirt. Right. <laughs> okay, so Coca-Cola. Is number one. It was picked as the best soda of all time. Pepsi didn't even crack the top ten. For real? For real. Wow, that's crazy because, I mean, I always thought those were like the main two. Yeah, and that you'd go Coke and then Pepsi or Pepsi and then Coke and right. then you'd start in on all the other sodas. And I enjoy them equally the same. I like Coke and Pepsi. Yeah, right. Well, no, no, no. I still think Coke's better. What do you, do you ever use Something, Coke? Some different foods pair with yes, different ones. Absolutely. Like uh, pizza right. and Pepsi in my eyes. So McDonald's good. and Coke. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I would totally go with you on that, Bolty. Top 10. Number one is Coke. Two is Dr. Pepper, Larry. Mm -hmm. Three is Sprite. Four is A&W Root Beer. Wow. You know what, though? There's nothing better than A&W with your pizza. For sure. I mean, that it's a commitment. Yeah. You're yeah. committing to a root beer. You're and you're like, I guess I'm going the root beer route. It's like you're going to be Do burping. It. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mountain Dew, number five. Mountain Dew's classic. And the, what I love about Mountain Dew is you can just chug it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mountain Dew's so refreshing. Um, seven. When, when I did construction, I'd always start the day out with a Mountain Dew. Yeah. Saw a pack of Marlboro Reds. <laughs> <laughs> seven Up was number six. Orange Crush. Still okay. in there in the top 10. They were number eight. That's a good Cherry soda. Coke, Sunkist Orange, and Barks Root Beer round out the top 10. I'll do them all. I just say, I'm okay with all of them. Yeah, those are good. Pepsi came in 12th. Which is just wow. crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. It totally is. That's kind of crazy. It's a little sweeter than Coke, too. Like, like. Yeah, there is a sweeter thing to Pepsi. I don't, yeah, Coke has more of a, like, a carbony, like, you know, kind of like, it's not as sweet. To me, Pepsi definitely has, like, a couple extra. A little sweeter. I can see, I see that, for <laughs> yeah. sure. Right. But, yeah, you're right, Bolsey. They all go with something different better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we should go have pizza. Yeah. <laughs> it's called soda food pairing. Yeah, right. We're experts. It is, right.